some friends here, or maybe not, but um, my name is William Bright Miles, but you can call me WBM, and this is Wake Up With WBM. Yes, it is seven o'clock at night, but I figure waking up is metaphorical, waking up is mystical, waking up is so many things other than just getting your ass out of the fucking bed, so why not wake up with WBM on a Wednesday afternoon? Ain't shit else going on in the world, so yeah, here we are. Um, I am nice and sweaty and shiny. I don't know where you are in the world, but it is maybe 148 degrees, maybe 147 in New York City right now. And I am a sweaty mess, but we're going to have a great time. I'm excited. Are you excited? Oh, boy. Um, as you can see, Trevor is still, due to the coronavirus, my assistant is not here. So I have to manage everything. And, you know, we have like it's like six different monitors. I have like an earpiece. It's just a lot going on right now. Um, but alas, we're here. And I'm really, really, really excited that uh, each of you is here with me today because I, I hope I don't start crying. But I have a really, really special guest. The most special guest in the fucking world. Um, the guest is mad that I'm cursing, but it is what it is. I learned how to curse from this guest. And without further ado, I want to bring the guests to the stage. It's real Gatois in here, so we got to move the furniture and the things ourselves. Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, let's get real tight in here. Um, you got to get in. So we're good on the Facebook camera, but the Instagram, oh my God, my edges is just busted. Um, you got to lean in. They can't see you. So we're going to have to sit like this the whole time. <laughs> Wave to the people. Hello. For all of you who don't know, this is, what's your name? Burl Jean Grimes Miles. And who are you? I am the mother of William Bright Miles. Yes. Make sure you project, because I'm yelling, so you got to match my I got to yell now. Okay. You got to yell now. I know how to do that. Um, we are the original Cheetah Girls. We are... Um, <laughs> It is hot as it is hot boots. You gotta make sure you stay in the camera, miss. Um, because we don't have like the fancy TV. So um actually I'm gonna lean out a little bit. But we are where are we going? I just realized I left my beauty bundles in the other room, so we're gonna have to figure out this makeup another way. But um we're going to the rodeo. We're going down to the rodeo. So what do you have? You take off your hat? You wanna take it off or you just wanna touch it back? I'm gonna take it off for right now. You're gonna take it off for right now. She got a little hat here. It's a little hot in here. So, full disclosure, um, right now Facebook actually has the better shot. If you can get to Facebook, great. If you get to Instagram, great. But the Facebook shot is beastly. It's not an HD. Um, you gotta still do your makeup. So, we're gonna go to the rodeo. Do you remember taking me to the rodeo as a kid? The black rodeo they used to have? They used to have it over at um, high school. Boys and girls high school. <laughs> they used to have it at the high school. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm talking like I'm still in Virginia. You know, there's only one high school. Still in Virginia. Yeah, I'm still in Virginia. When, when was the last time you lived in Virginia? Uh, 1971. 1971. And you talking like you're still in Virginia. Um, you know, some things die hard. Some things die hard. For the record, I never... Um, lived in Virginia, and I was not born in 1971. Nope, nope, um, nope. So I, we still have our mirrors and all of that stuff. So for all of you that follow me, um, and I was just talking to my mom about this, so what are you doing? Are you doing a soft beat or are you doing a full beat? Do you know what those words mean? Not exactly. What do you think soft beat means? What do you think a beat is? I don't have a clue right now. Think about it. If we're getting ready to do makeup, it must be made in the foot makeup things, right? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. So beating your face, like right now I'm beating my face. And beating your face means doing your makeup. That's okay. what the drag queens say and the gay kids. Okay, I hear you. 
And then a soft beat okay. is, you know, just maybe a little lip, a little blush, a little gloss. That sounds like a Go point. to the grocery store. A full beat is like, I want to be someone different. I'm going to do a full beat. No, but no. it's going to be a soft beat when it's done. Um, Bro, I was not doing this is We're going to do what the kids call your skin, but better. Okay. So we're using the same mirrors? We're using the same mirror. Let me try to adjust this a little bit to help the kids out because you're the real star here. I'm the star tonight. Yes. Oh, okay. Agree. Tap like if you agree that she's the star. Like oh, I said, Jesus. Facebook has the full shot. Okay. Um, <laughs> we got Christian Gibbs. You know Christian. Yes, I do. Beatrice. You know Beatrice. Yes, I do. Hello, my children. Nicholas is here. I Nobody got glasses on, so we can't really see. I know I can't. But we're going to work it out. Um. So yeah, so we were talking about the rodeo. We were talking about we were talking about a lot of things, and you also told me this lady. So first of all, y'all think that like some of these other people are divas, but this lady came. Oh, you doing concealer? I was that put it on my eye. You put a little concealer around your eyes. Yeah, my eyes. What kind of? So this lady also she apparently has money. She keep her money. She got all the good products. Y'all remember she didn't see this video, but I dragged her in the video because her products were all like dry and crusty. Do y'all remember that? And I was like, oh, what is this trash? Apparently. She was just holding out because now Miss Thing shows up with the Marc Jacobs with the little magnet. That's more Marc Jacobs. She got the MAC bronzer, Sephora, that's whatever. Um, oh, we did drag this one though, and she's still using it. The old, <laughs> the old palette. That ain't These nothing. are all new. But what? These oh, that's new. that mail order stuff. It is not um, mail order. How you get it? I go to the booth. Booth? Where? Oh, this is like sorority makeup. What? You're in a sorority, right? Of course I'm in. What sorority are you in? The first, the finest, the best. Out. I kept it out for Sorority Incorporated. 1908. And there it is, children. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. So, we like, we're going down to the rodeo. So, I was saying she came with a whole list of things that we couldn't talk about. Um, you know, and so that's what we're going to talk about today. All the things she said we weren't going to talk about. But the first thing I wanted to talk about was, because I got a lot of messages about, well, actually the very, very first thing I want to talk about is I just want to thank you all for um, following my Black Gay and On Screen. Why do you stop? You finished? Mm-hmm. You done? It's hot up here. What you call it? A dusting? No, that's not what you call it. What a you dusting? <laughs> what do you call it? Wait. A beat. A beat. A light beat. No. A beat beat. A soft beat. Oh, a soft beat. Oh, okay. Um, right. But her, um, the first thing I want to talk about was thank you all for supporting the Black Gay On Screen series. This actually will be the last episode that I record before that series is done. We um, are, it was a 30-day exploration. We're on day 24. For all of you that can't do math, 24 plus 7 is 31. Oh, June are. only has 30 days. So this is the last episode I'll do before that. Today we explored Titus Andromedon, who was played by Titus Burgess on Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. But um, so many great shows were explored. Uh, and it's just been really exciting to learn about um, all of it. Uh, you guys have been coming in my comments, sliding in my DMs with your thoughts, which I love when you, you come to me in the DMs. Like, keep doing that. It doesn't hurt if you want to put it on there so other people can engage as well. But whatever makes you comfortable, I'm here for it. I ain't doing shit else, so I'll just respond to it all day. Um, <laughs> you're not supposed to say that. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, but the other thing that I wanted to talk about was I had posted a picture of Angela Bassett. Well, it wasn't uh, just a picture. Someone else on, you know, my foundation doesn't match, so somebody gave me these tips to, like, help make it match. But um, somebody else had posted online. Mm-hmm. No, this is a concealer. This is my concealer. You'll see. The foundation is just all wrong. But, um... Somebody posted this picture and they were just like, how does Angela do it? She looks so good. And so I posted and was like, I think that Angela's had work done. And so my mother and I, before um, we went live and we were just in the green room prepping for the interview, I was sharing that I think, you know, she had work done. And so what were you, you had some thoughts. What did you want to say about it? I think that maybe... I think maybe she did a little something, something, but I'm not sure. I don't think she did something massive, but my real feeling is, you know what? If that makes you happy and you got the bucks to do it, go for it. Enjoy your life, because tomorrow is not promised. I just got 
real spiritual over here. So you heard it here. Um, yes. Angela be getting the she got a dusting. <laughs> um, you really done? Just as sure as I'm sitting. What did you do? I uh, put a little foundation on there. I put a little under my eyes so they don't look so dark. But they look like they're marked a little bit. You put on lipstick too. Mm -hmm. Listen. Maybe do it again. Like you, we still got a whole show to do. So I gotta keep doing my makeup. I mean, what else you gonna do? <laughs> I don't know. I can sit here and just be laughing too for another hour. You know. Um. Okay. So, so I but I also figured, you know what? Why not do I a? Can't hardly see them. See what in the mirror? I can't see. Period. I, I oh, because of the light. Yeah. Some people were born for the spotlight, and then <laughs> there were others. <laughs> But you know what? I actually, I'm going to just sit here and listen to this lady talk because I don't know if y'all know her, but she, mother has stories. Um, and how old are you? Do you mind the children on your age, Miss Thing? I just turned 70 in February. Say that again for the people in the back. I turned 70 in February, and I'm glad to be here. So if you're 70, that means that you were born in 1950. Correct. And so we were talking. So one of the things that she didn't want to talk about was um, everything that's happening in the world right now. And why didn't she want to? And what I mean by everything happening in the world was just specifically like the um, political. Huh, the, what'd you say? The march. Well, we call the marches. And why didn't you want to talk about it? As I make you talk about it. Because I feel like I'm living my life for the late 70s, the early, the late 60s, the early 70s. And. It wasn't a good feeling. It wasn't really a good feeling. And hardly anything happened from it. When I say hardly anything happened from it, because we're in the same position right now. We were, what, 40, 50 years ago. So when when are we going to do something? You know, When is it really going to be beneficial? Mm -hmm. you know, I don't like the people who take the opportunity to loot. Because I don't understand that kind of thing. But the people that are looting, I think it's been pretty proven that it's not. Yeah, but it's, it's still there. The same thing happened back there then, too. So, you know. But, um, so you were talking about this specific story. You, one thing you mentioned was that you said uh, there was Mega Evers was mm -hmm. uh, top of mind for you. Can you just talk more about that? Well, when he got killed, it flooded the campuses around. And everybody just, just like now, started with the protests, the marches, and the looting came with it. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I was at Norfolk State in Virginia. And it was uh, in the late afternoon, and all of a sudden, you look out, and they were saying, you have to leave the campus. Everybody, you know, you got to go, you got to go. And when you stepped outside, Copley Avenue is the main address. And so if you stepped out of that Tidewater Hall, all you could see were the National Guard, mm -hmm. Shoulder to shoulder, it's we sit at the top of the hill. The street is sort of like a hill, and you sit at the top part, and it comes down and around. And they only had special places that broke the line, so the people that were on the campus could get off the campus and go wherever it was that they needed to go. And what was that like? What was? I mean, these questions I think sound kind of dumb, but what what was going through your head when that happened? Were well, you protesting? Did you march and protest? I did my share, yes, but that day, no. That mm -hmm. day, I couldn't understand why they were tearing up our old stuff. That's I'm saying, why are you tearing up the buildings? What does that have to do with anything? Because there's going to come a time when you want to come back, and you have nothing to come back to. Because mm -hmm. they don't move that fast to repair, replace, rebuild, especially not on black campuses. I don't know what they do other places. So then I just tried to get home. And when I got home, the first thing my mom said, because I was a community student, my mom said, I've been sitting here praying, just saying, if she just keep her mouth closed and just bring it home, home, girl. <laughs> bring it on home. What she, what she mean by keep your mouth closed? I'm always talking. I'm, Don't I, look at yourself. Look at I'm you. always talking and I'm always, I got an opinion that I don't mind sharing. Sometimes it's asked for and other times it's not. And so she said, oh, she might get me and start talking. Saying things that she shouldn't say because you had to watch what you just like now. Well, more so then you really had to uh, filter what you were going to say. 
for fear of reprisal, but that could be mean arrest or, or you get hit. Yep, or that dog they might inadvertently let go, or that hose before you knew it, you were riding along the street because when a hose hits you, it is so powerful, it's gonna make you move. You're not you're just gonna stand there like a statue. That's just not gonna happen. You were hit with hoses? Not me, but I got some of the water. So you saw people getting hit with Oh heck yeah. And dogs. Yeah, they had dogs, and they're holding the dogs back, and the dogs are trying to get away. And sometimes they loose the rein, you know, the, mm -hmm. the leash, and, and let them get a little closer so to you to push the crowds back. So that's what the purpose of the dogs was. And sometimes if you act like you want to run, they get to let the dog loose and mm, bring it back a little faster than you want because they go for the butt to pull you down. <laughs> I'm just saying. I... I think I knew I knew about the dogs. I don't think I knew about the hoses, and I don't. I mean, dogs are far worse than hoses, I guess. But it's just still crazy. I don't know. Hoses burn. That water with that power that's coming out of there, that hurts. It burns. It's just that powerful. Think about what a a, a, a fire hose is for. If we talk about a hose from a fire truck, or one that they've attached to a, a, a Johnny pump. Okay, how do they put out the fire? These fires that they have, that they're not spitting on it. So it has to be powerful in order to do its job. Are they going to lessen that power? You cannot pull the power back once you turn, turn the water on. It's out. Mm -hmm. It's gone. That's so you just hope to hell that you ain't in it. That's it. Part of why I wanted you to share that story is because there's some people out here, probably not anybody watching this, but maybe, who like to think that, you know, Slavery was so long ago. Oh hell! <laughs> you know, like that wasn't really cursed. They, <laughs> they, no, right? Um, don't forget you had your wine. Oh, that's um, true. Too. And water if you get thirsty. But um, you know, they like to say that slavery was so long ago. Uh, I was watching a video. You're the same age as Debbie Allen. I don't know if you knew that, but y'all are the same age. And so Debbie shared some of her experience about June, Juneteenth. She said that when she was growing up. Juneteenth was the only day they were allowed as black people to go to the amusement park. Well, we didn't, we weren't that fortunate. <laughs> we were, <laughs> hello, somebody. We were not that fortunate. You know, we couldn't, um, we only had uh, one park in Portsmouth, and it was at Portsmouth City Park. And, and at that time, black folk didn't go to Portsmouth City Park. There was a park in Norfolk, and and that's just like a tunnel ride, like going from here to Queens, from Queens to Manhattan. And they had a section that we could go in there, and that was an adventure just to go to the park. Where did we play? Across the street in the field that was cleared out, and there was enough of us. We had our own team, so we always said, y'all want to play? You can play ball. What kind of ball you want to play? We had enough people. When I said enough people, I have seven sisters and three brothers. So we could play whatever you want and had a reserve. And there was a time when everybody was there that was able, that was able to, to play whatever it was they wanted to play. It's looking better. What my face? I look like I'm in a casket. For real, for real. But it all comes together. It'll come together, okay. Allegedly. It, I mean, so I don't know. You're rushing me. You're just so quick. Um, but you, you didn't know. tell me I need to take forever. And that's the way I, I haven't had on makeup in three months. You know that. Do I you have on makeup on right now? Too. Like, you took soft beat and you, this is a dusting. This That's not soft beat. That is a dusting. Isn't that what I told you? But black don't crack. She, do you have any fillers? Have you had any work done? No. So, that is what it is, right? Um, this is me. Well, we don't want to be all gloom and doom. I mean, and talking about civil rights is not all gloom and doom, but that could be a whole episode. But um, what else is going on in the world? So the other thing, these fireworks that are happening in New York City, tell me how you feel about those. If I could, the person that set the fireworks off on Saturday that gave me a headache that I had for two days because it was right around the corner. And you even said you thought that Macy's had a fire sale with the stuff that they're not going to use this year. And they bought them all and set them off in the middle of Hart Street. 
at Nostrum Avenue. I feel like, okay, if it were next week around the 4th and they were going to do it, maybe the, the 2nd, the 3rd, the 4th, okay, whatever. But now they're even starting before it gets dark. Who sets off fireworks at 7.30, quarter to 8? Who does that on a Sunday? Hello? So how do I feel about the fireworks? I don't know if they should be put in jail, but I mean, they need somebody need to take the mess away from them because they're worse than a child with a bad toy. Mm -hmm. Some people are saying they think it's NYPD giving them the fireworks. What do you think about that? I have no clue. It's <laughs> <laughs> like some dumb shit. Well, they were saying, and this is why I kind of maybe believe it. They were saying because you know, with all the protests about Black Lives Matter, that they are saying that maybe the police are giving them the fireworks so that as like to be like y'all want to get rid of the police we'll show you what a world without the police looks like it's a conspiracy theory this is alleged i have not seen it with my own eyes but that i'm just sharing what some of the thoughts of the world are do you have a thought a feeling about that that sounds ludicrous I, I, I don't ludicrous want... you don't think it could be a little possible i mean it's extreme i definitely agree with you that it's extreme but ludicrous ludicrous means that it's not at all possible. Yeah, right. Anything is possible, especially in here in New York City, USA. However, I think that's stretching it a bit much. I really, really, really truly do. So where do you think they're getting them from? Well, some people still drive in their cars. I remember one time I came back, I came back from Virginia coming down 13 and they had all these fireworks and I thought I was going to get some for Labor Day. You've been visiting with my mom, you know, and you all were in the car. Chester was in the front, you were in the back, and on the back seat I had this big box of fireworks. So at the infamous Atlantic in Bedford, the cop calls me, puts his lights on, and pulls me over at Wait, three blocks away? What's that? It was beyond Fulton Street. What's the next street? Uh, Halsey. And and I said, and I've just driven about 360 miles. And he says, you know you went through that light. I said, what light? He said, the light at Atlantic Avenue. I said, at Atlantic Avenue? Only a jackass would run that light up there because you can't see anything. You really want to die. So he says, I said, I don't believe this. Then he said, well, I could give you a, a ticket for all those fireworks that you got back there. I said, I didn't steal them. I bought them when I was in Virginia. He said, well, they're illegal in New York. I said, okay, do what you got to do, sir. And let me be. So what did he do? Gave me a ticket. Do you remember how much it was for? I don't know what it was back then. He said, I ran the light. So, moral of the story is, you think that they drove to Virginia and bought the fireworks? I'm a little confused. That was the question I asked you. And I told you no. I don't think they drove to Virginia. Uh, is that where Macy's goes to get his fire goes to get his fireworks in Virginia? I don't think so. I think that you can go somewhere in Long Island and get some fireworks. I'm sure. Oh, you know or, the plug. You know where to get fireworks. Or. You can always use Amazon. I don't think that's illegal. <laughs> I mean, you can get I anything in Amazon. Amazon's shipping fireworks to New York City? Y'all tell me. I that. don't know. You can get anything. Oh, Carmen said, hey, by the way. Hey, boo. Um, Miss you. I need you here to soak my clothes. Yesterday was her birthday. <gasps> now that, I'm sorry about. But happy birthday, Carmen. You want to sing her happy birthday? Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday! Happy birthday to ya! Happy birthday to ya! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Hey. Um, okay, so <clears throat> that um, Ooh, 
it's getting very hot in here, but you know, this that showbiz, as you can see, this foundation, we just have to leave. It's just, it, it's not working. And since we're only doing dustings, I'm going to be back <laughs> with just a quick little dusting. I have my Fenty Beauty. OMG, right. And we're going to do a quick dusting and we'll be back on par. Um, so did y'all have any questions for Mama Girl out there in La La Land, Cyberland? I just wanted to have any questions. Um, she doesn't watch Insecure. Let me ask you this question, though. So there's a show called Insecure, right? It comes on HBO. I get to watch it every day for HBO. Thank you. And um, side note, did y'all know that they're canceling the HBO Go? Um, they're canceling the HBO Go app. So, like, there's just be HBO Max and then HBO Now. It's just so confusing. But um, I got to figure out my life out there. But, um, so on the show, there's two friends. And so I'm just curious. I'm trying to figure out the best way to sum this up. They've been best friends for a long time, high school. They're, in, you know, they're a little bit younger than me. Let's say they're 30. And, like, one friend feels like the other friend has... Oh, actually, no, I'm going to talk about a specific instance. So, friend one is Issa. She's the person the show is about. Okay. Well, they have shows about both of them. Issa was trying to do a project where she wanted to get... My, her best friend Molly, they weren't in the best place. They were having some issues as friends. No real, like they didn't have had a specific issue, but you know, sometimes you're just not mm -hmm. in sync. But Molly's boyfriend works in the entertainment industry. And so she, Issa was throwing this event. She had an issue where the headliner for the event flaked at the last moment or, you know, canceled at the last moment. So okay. she asked Molly if Molly would speak to her boyfriend, Andrew. Tell me if you're still keeping up. She asked Molly to speak to Andrew, who worked in the entertainment industry. To, well, it was a specific person. So she's like, can mm -hmm. you talk to Andrew about this specific artist? Molly is like, you know what? No, because I want to keep Separate. separation. Okay. So then Issa used to date Andrew's friend, Nathan. So then Issa reached out to Nathan and asked Nathan to ask. Andrew. So she forgot about the conversation that... She didn't forget about it, but she said Molly didn't want to ask. And so she but asked... But she was determined to get somebody to ask. Well, him. she was determined to make her event happen. Do okay. you think Issa was wrong? Yeah. Tell me. Ooh. Ooh. She okay, so me. that's like you're crossing, in my book, you're crossing the line. What line is you cross? Our friendship line, if nothing else. And you're going to be sort of like going behind my back. Why don't you go and get somebody that's intertwined in this thing to go to my man to get something for you? I'm confused. But why didn't you say yes in the first place? Maybe she didn't want to. But I see. Okay. That's her right. But so it's like since you didn't want to, I found someone who did. Okay. Good luck with that. That's the show, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. So that's why I watch that now. So you, you really think that Molly was right? That Issa went behind her back? I really feel that part, yeah. Now, so then, even though Issa knew the other guy, so it wasn't like she went and found someone on Instagram. It's like that she dated the guy. She could have went to him first. You know what I mean? Like, that's a really Why didn't you go to him first? Because I'm closer to you. You're my friend. Okay. That's kind of stuff I don't want to get involved in. Well, it's not real life, so you don't have to catch a lot of No, that's why. It. No. <laughs> when I say I don't want to get involved in that's why I don't look at those kinds of shows because... But it gets better. Oh, my God. So then Molly comes to the event and basically... With the friend? Well, with the boyfriend. Her boyfriend. Uh -huh. And then she tries to... She makes a scene at the event. Was Molly wrong? Because she's like, how could you go behind my back? Da -da 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 -da. No, see, now that was dumb. Okay. You're right. I would have felt like you went behind my back, but at the event, that's not your time to air your feelings about the situation in the public and tell everybody how dumb you are. You could have waited, and then you could voice your opinion with the same audience that you used when she came to you and asked you about it. You and her. That's that's what I call, you don't need to put it on the 7 o'clock news. So now who's worse, in your opinion? Who's more wrong? Two wrongs don't make a right. I know two wrongs don't make a right, but who's more wrong at this point? You know what I mean? Like I guess that. the one the one who made the scene at the affair. So I need you to look in the camera and say Molly is canceled. Molly is canceled. <laughs> <laughs>
that's all I wanted you to just co-sign because I don't like Molly. So. Oh, okay. Molly's a piece of work. I mean, that's just to be the. Okay. I mean, they're all the show's called Insecure. They're all. Oh, I'm just going to say, it sounds like we got some uh, inner stuff going on here, insecurity somewhere. But you did say it was insecure, so there it is. I should have kept that in the forefront. But give me some NCIS New Orleans and I'm not happy. What do you like about those shows? The excitement of the intrigue behind trying to solve these cases. Some of which I saw within 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so why do you keep watching? Because it's yes. easy. Yeah, it's, it doesn't require anything of me but my time. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't have to think too hard because I... What, what you going to do, bro? Uh, between that and I see what I really like to look at. I love HGTV. What shows? You can know the names of the shows. Mm -hmm. Uh, hometown flip or flop. Uh, they never flop list. though. I hate flip. I never have you ever seen a flop? No, uh -uh. I the one that I really love. I used to love uh, Fixer Upper, but they mm -hmm. don't do it now because they moved on to bigger and better things. But I love Love It or List It, mm -hmm. you know. And sometimes I actually pick it wrong, mm -hmm. you know, but. I just like it, and I I like what I really like is my hometown, Law, Mississippi. That's what I want to get fifty dollars and go buy me a house and end up with a fifty thousand dollars and go buy me a house and fix it up for another fifty thousand dollars. And when I walk in, it's got uh, an estimated value of two hundred thousand dollars. Now you do the math. I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to go with fifty thousand dollars in repairs, fifty thousand dollars in repairs, and they end up with equity of two hundred thousand. I stop, a hundred and seventy-five thousand. That's what they say. Well, when they finish, you know, a couple of times, so I seen them do something. The camera got off a of little quick. I said, "Let them look at." Them. So I guess they make a more mistake than me. Would you move to Laurel, Mississippi? I'd move there if they were going to put me on TV and I could go down and buy a house for 50 and it would be my vacation. <laughs> you go vacation to Laurel, Mississippi? Uh -huh. For how well, long? How many weeks a year? Four. At one time? Or you mean like two days here, three days there? Mm -hmm. or a week here, a week I there? think I think I could go down. I might just stay there a little more. I could stay, go back to Virginia and stay for a month. <laughs> That's it, though. Not forever. It's too, it's a little too slow. Although some people will say, well, you talk like you're still there. But do I talk that slow? Am I talking slow? Hello? Tap like if you think she's talking slow. If they talking tap slow? like, you'll see some little bubbles pop can, up. Can you hear and the And by slow, we mean like just a little slavish. A little, a little, a little slow. You know what I'm saying? A little I'm just slave. Saying, ooh. Is that a bad joke? We shouldn't make fun of the slave. We shouldn't make fun of slaves. I don't have to ask her I'm, that. I'm, I'm, but we're not making fun of the slaves. But she sounds a little I sound country. A little okay. country. A little country, but I like a little bit more. I would prefer you say a little more rock and roll. I'm just saying. Are you more rock and roll? You, what rock and roll songs do you know? Don't Start Me the Lions on the TV. <laughs> you know some Pointer Sisters? I don't know. If you start one, I might just sing it. No way to control it. It's totally automatic. Whenever you're around. Uh-uh. Um, I don't know the words. I can hum Jump, them. jump for my love. Jump in. Jump in. That's all I know. You know. I'm so excited. And I, I just, just can't hide it. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I want you. I want you. There you go. You know, why do I know these songs more than you and I wasn't alive then? Because you were probably listening to more music than I did. Did you go to Studio 54 back in the day? No. Never ever? You told me before you went once. Well, never ever. I thought you meant like, was that a place that I frequented? That's what I thought you meant. No. And I said never ever. <laughs> once. I've done almost, when I first came to New York, I went to everything at least once. Everything that anybody said it was worth going to at least once to say that I had been there. Because how can you live in a city that has so much going for it? 
and you never do anything, you never go anywhere. Keith Rumfeld message. I just saw this. Remember Keith Rumfeld from one from two twenty. Two twenty. Oh my goodness gracious! Hey boo. I don't know. If, yeah, he. I just saw that. And Kim Porter was his Kim Smith. Yeah, mm-hmm. Kim Porter. Um, Tatiana's all these people. Oh, Brianna. Right. I didn't even realize all these messages were coming in. Yeah, everybody moves to Facebook. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! I didn't see any of these comments. Um, Nathan reaches out to Issa. And Molly wouldn't know her man without Issa. Oh, right. Um. Nicholas said that I hate Molly, but you got a friend in her because she likes Molly. Um, oh my gosh, I was wondering why nobody was saying anything because I didn't see any of the comments. They want to know what you're sipping on. Some cheap Antonio. stuff. That, some cheap stuff that I bought from uh, the drugstore when I couldn't do no better. It's Chateau Diana, the ghetto, ghetto. Okay, but but mind you, it all tastes good at a point. It ain't that bad. It's not that bad, you know. But see, uh, that's what was open. I tried not to become a real wino during this like me. pandemic. I don't know what you all wanted to tell the truth when it comes to alcohol. But uh, <laughs> I, I, I will say this, that he's always bringing me something bubbly to sip on. So now you make me sound like a pusher. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Don't get me wrong. I appreciate every one of those bottles that you've given me. <laughs> The only reason that I didn't have one of them up here now is because I can't drink a whole bottle by myself. And so I always need some. I can drink a whole bottle by myself, but I don't choose to go that route too often. And I don't want it to go flat on me. So. Right, because that's the worst. Like Then it's not worth having. I don't care how much you pay for it. If it's supposed to be bubbly and it goes flat. What's the most expensive bottle of champagne you ever had? Do you remember? Or you just had so many, you can't choose just one. I haven't had, oh, I don't know. One time Dawn gave me something. He had it, and Dawn, I think it was over $100, $150, something. At the liquor store, not at the restaurant. And the reason why I'm making that distinction yeah. is because, like, I'm sure all of you guys know, but, you know, when you spend $100 on a bottle at the restaurant, that bottle in the liquor store is probably $25. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's okay. But if you spend $100... At once, the liquor store, once that's we, some good stuff. Well, once we, we were we were in Las Vegas, mm-hmm. and we were at the, what's the pirate ship? What was I've never it? been to Las Vegas. You've never taken me. I don't know. Oh, okay. I, we were, no remorse. There was no, <laughs> no, <laughs> no remorse. Jamila's sister said hi. I'm hey, gonna, let's see. At the time that I started going to Las Vegas, you were grown then, too. So, hello, somebody. That's oh, so I was on my own? Since you took me there, yep. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Life comes at you fast. Sometimes. But uh, <laughs> I was in I was in a restaurant, and we were in Las Vegas. We, we weren't at the Bellagio. I'm trying to think. Uh, it, was a, it had something to do with pirate ship. But anyway, that was the most expensive drink that I'd ever had, and it was $250 a shot. And when I first of all, you were doing shots. I just I, in the glass, I mean, you know, in the glass, and I just wanted to. Uh, you paid two hundred fifty dollars for a shot. I wasn't paid. That's the whole. <laughs> the gag is. You know what that means. The gag is. Okay. You know what that means. I that was figured out. Yeah. Well, what do you think it means? The gag is, but the real truth of the matter is. Yeah, that's true. That's that's correct. I've been some places with price tags. If it was coming from girl, she probably would have been still trying to get there. So thanks to some of my friends. Oh. You know? So you're a scammer. No, I didn't say that. Stop looking at yourself. Oh, I forgot. I didn't look this way. Uh, Not a scammer, by no means. I know what that means. No, no. (laughs) Uh, But I have friends. And it's at their stations in life, certain times that they were available for them to do certain things, and they say, well, hey, I'm not married, you're not married. What do you need to do? Can you take that plane ticket? Can you take that plane ticket? Come on. And let's get these $250 shots at 60. Sell us some bottles. So you was at 60 years old in the club. Were you in the club? Y'all was at the club? Y'all had a section? 
you all for a special session. That's what money does. Talk to me. So you in the club, taking shots. Got you. I would rather say having a drink. I don't like taking shots. I'm not sitting there. You're not hammering. Putting putting salt on my hand and bottoms up. No. Did you do that in your twenties in New yeah. York? Never in New York. You was in New York in the seventies. You told me nineteen seventy four. You single sex free. Because I don't like no. So I don't like it. So what do you like? So you you were sipping on wine well, at the club? Hold it. Because I know you were at the club. For the longest time, I didn't drink. I didn't always drink. I grew up in a dry house. So I didn't drink. When I first came to New York, I didn't drink. Didn't smoke and never learned how to and didn't want to. So. And you were a singer. That's why you didn't smoke. I right. The first the very now. first time that I tried to smoke and I felt it in my throat and I said, oh, hell to the no. Was it a cigarette or something else? Something else. And cigarettes, <laughs> when I came to New York, cigarettes are dumb. Like cigarettes what? came to New York, and us in Virginia, they were, we were paying 25 cents for a pack. We came here to New York, and it was already up to a dollar. I said, Y'all kidding me? It was same 20 cigarettes, I think that's what you get, mm-hmm. burning out. So, when I was in school, because everybody else was smoking, I would burn a cigarette. I never inhaled a cigarette in my life. Mm-hmm. I do this and try not to choke it, blowing it back out because it looked fashionable. That's the only what was it, the Virginia there. Slims? No, they they did. Uh, it's from the Hudson? No, that's what my father smoked. Newports, I think that's what they right. used. Because it was a long yeah, cigarette. No. It was a long cigarette. Well, Virginia Slims are long. Newports aren't long. Well, I mean, I don't know what was, they were doing in 1970. Well, maybe it could have been to, to show you how I really. <laughs> you don't know. Uh-uh. Um, so that's it. So, but, so you were saying, but at the club, you didn't do shots. You weren't licking the salt. Lick, stuck in the lime and taking a tequila. So what were you drinking at the club? I always wanted a rum and coke. And the reason that I wanted a rum and coke is because I never had any rum. I always just had the coke. And they caught me because somebody, we were all sitting there and I put my glass down. But somebody else put their glass down and they weren't really looking and they reached back. And when they reached back, they actually picked up my glass and they went, okay. This is just cold. And the colors are off and they say, oh, that's because you got bros glass. And and so you used, to, you used to drink Coca-Cola and you would act like you were drunk? Well, I guess no, people just always thought you were drunk. Right. They Even just, when you're not drunk, people exactly. think you're drunk. Exactly. Because they're and like, she's so loud. And I'm always laughing and all this. So they figured that I was always hip to what I was and still isn't. But there's alcohol in the glass now. Oh, for sure. My little... What's the Chateau Diane? You can say Diana. Jamila's here. Hey. Hey, baby girl. Um, Brianna said Newport 100s are long. So maybe that's what they were smoking. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Um, but cigarettes are stupid. I don't, I've never and understood. Here, here in New York, now, I don't understand why people are still paying $15 and $20 for a pack of cigarettes. Are you kidding me? Just to flood your lungs and let it burn up in an ashtray? That's the dumbest piece of crap I heard in a long time. Sorry, pickle your liver, but don't ruin your lungs. I mean, okay, let's just, <laughs> yeah. or whatever, let's just say, just think about it. I had to tell $15 a pack, and back there people used to smoke two packs, three packs a day. Do the math. Seven days a week. Do the math. Ooh. 15 times two is what? Huh? 15 times two is what? 30. 30 times 7 is what? 21. 210. 210 times 52. I, look, I'm even more. Because C9 is already in my pocket, and it's not coming out. The bags. So I don't have to worry about it. But I'm just saying for those people who are still out there, got to puff, got to stand outside in the rain, in the cold. That's the, the thing sweat. I don't get. Is that like, you and know, we all have in. our, and the yes, those two things. Because my thing is like, one, everybody has their advice, right? We hear sipping alcohol, somebody somewhere is watching this and be like, why would you drink alcohol? Whatever, life is hard. Somebody does cannabis. Because I've been but, incarcerated for three months and I owe myself a drink. <laughs> incarcerated? That's what I keep saying. I know it's not that. <laughs> that's my word. I feel like I've been incarcerated for the last three, going on four months. No. When do you go get paroled? 
they want to be stupid. Um, we're going to come back to that in a second, but what I was saying about the um, the smoking is that I just hate the fact that one, right, like, I get drunk, I, the same reason why you shouldn't drink and drive, because you your drunkenness then impacts someone else, so and that's yeah. incorrect, and that's not okay. But if you want to get drunk and run laps around your house and crack your head, that's your that's business. business. Um, but I hate the fact that you smoking on the street is going in my face. And then the other thing is, like, y'all have to go outside, like, I can always put this in a sippy cup, in a water yeah. bottle... You know what I mean? I got Joanne the scammer over here teaching me how to get two hundred fifty dollars shots on someone else. Um, you shouldn't be ashamed of yourself, Ryan. I'm not trying to teach you how to scam. Stop <laughs> that bull right now. Don't let it go another further. Stop another it. further? You were gonna say something else. <laughs> End it right here. I ain't trying to scam nobody. I wasn't then, and I ain't now. So when you get your um. So let's talk about the coronavirus. Um, we don't have to talk about the virus, but like, what has your... So for those of you who don't know, my mother is very extroverted. She's a very, very active member of her community. Uh, she, you know, uh, is very selfless, does a lot of community service, rarely home. She, even though she's retired from one job, she worked another job, she has a church, she's just here there and everywhere. What was it like for you being incarcerated, which I'm sure is... We're offending someone. I apologize, but it is, it is what it is. So, what was it like for you? What has it been like for you being incarcerated? Is that a whole separate episode, a very special episode? Well, in the beginning, that first month between you and your brother, that felt like you had to make sure that I didn't do this and I didn't do that. It was. I never was really afraid. I had to let other people help to convince me at first that this is really serious, that this is not a joke. Then when I sat down, when I started watching the news and really following what was going on, I felt like at some points, if you just dwell, if I looked at the news in the morning, then I looked at Cuomo at 11, Then the news came back on when Cuomo shut up at 12. And then here we come with the mid. The news used to start at 6. Now it starts at 4. But you know, just because it starts at 4, you don't have to watch it. I know, but at first, (laughs) I know that, Brian. Because on a regular day. On a regular day, she watches the 5 o'clock news in the morning. And then she's going to watch it until Good Morning America comes on. She's going to watch Good Morning America. And then she's going to watch the news at noon. She's going to watch the 5 o'clock news and the 6 o'clock news. Yes, it is. Not true. You don't watch the 5 o'clock news and the 6 o'clock news? No, I do not. What you watch at 5 o'clock? Uh, if I'm not looking at NCIS or something like that, uh, CSI, I'm probably looking at flip or flop, depending on which day it is. Day of the week, because they don't all come on every day. And then at 6 o'clock? Now we'll turn the news because I like uh, favorite news. So, but you were saying you were watching the news and it was stressing you out. Yeah, it really was. It was like working on my last nerve. I called every Tom, Dick, and Harry that I knew all day long. So, then I was getting sick of the the telephone. And then it went from telephone to Zooms to webinars to... Do you like Zoom? Eh, I don't like it. I think I I can take it or leave it. I have a very nice picture that I use with Zoom most of the time. If I don't have to say something, then Wait. I put up my picture. <laughs> I just want to hear you correctly. So you like you like Zoom because you have a nice picture and you turn your camera off mm-hmm. and you just let them talk and you go. I said that th- then sometimes sometimes I put the the picture up and I'm sitting right there, but <laughs> I just you just why told you, you I'm it? you just told why you gotta secret? watch why. That ain't no secret because everybody know me know that. That's how that be. That's Burl. That's the real deal. So let's just tell the truth. I ain't not here for a show. That's the real deal. <laughs> Actually, it is your show. Though. Well, whatever. <laughs> However you decide that you want to say it in the real world. But no, I think with Zoom, some people love to hear themselves. If you were in a real meeting and sitting right mm-hmm. there, people that love to hear themselves talk feel that when you go on Zoom, they should do the same thing. No. 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 Because in the meeting, we want to shut you up. But we can't. Because everybody has their opportunity to speak. But 
it, every time you turn around, there's a zoom for this and a zoom for that. Zoom, 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 zoom. And you just go like. <laughs> All I want to do is have a zoom, zoom, zoom. Absolutely. <laughs> so I think that's what wore me out, you know. And the other side of that is if you have a meeting, well, even with a zoom, you can choose not to come or not. You can choose to come or not. But people think because you're at home working or people think because you are in the house that that gives them the opportunity to give you more than what you were already doing. You were already doing too much. When I'm looking that's a word. It, now, that's a word because I feel I like that's the frustration I think a lot of people have. Um, and Crystal, you know, Crystal Bailey. Etiquette Institute of Washington spoke about this, right? Like, the people feel like since you're home the whole day, um, that, like, you're available. And it's like, maybe I'm watching NCIS or working mm -hmm. on something else or just don't want to talk to you. Trying or, to figure out a mask that will allow me to breathe comfortably. Have you found a mask that will allow you to breathe comfortably? No. no. How do you feel about masks? Do you wear masks? Yeah, yeah. How do you feel about people that don't wear masks? They piss me off. Well, tell me why. Tell them why you're mad. Tell the people why you're mad. I get mad because a mask is not for me, per se. A mask is to protect me from me. So, or to keep the atmosphere, quote unquote, clear while we're together. Mm -hmm. So, if you're coming in and you're juicing up when you talk, hello. <laughs> <laughs> What's juicy mouth for when, the people in the back? When you talk and you spit, I guess mm -hmm. that's the best way to describe it. Something liquefied comes out of your mouth. <laughs> it's not intentional, but it's just the way it is. Could be because some people, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> go there. Some people are juicing out because they don't take the time that is necessary to prepare, to formulate the speech, to formulate what they're saying mm. properly. You know, some people have lazy tongues, and when you have a, <laughs> a lazy tongue, you tend to be more of a juicy mouth when you talk <laughs> than when you don't, because you know it's the way it is. Then the other part is. Are these scientific terms? Lazy tongue, juicy mouth. This is the way I was taught when I came up down south. It so sort of works for me. And when I'm talking to the people that I'm talking to, they understand what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. okay. Tap like if you understand what she's talking about. Um, Did I get any taps? <laughs> well, you got to give them a second. It's not so, the technology ain't come that far. Okay, so then, then the other part of that is, um, and this is a true. I don't need to read a book to find it out. When you have partial dentures, you got a bridge or all that, sometimes it gets in the way of when you're really talking. Mm -hmm. So that causes it too. So to be on the safe side, you put on a mask. So when you take your mask off, if your mask is wet, you know what you're putting in. <laughs> if you take your mask off, you can feel safe. So you know that I stopped infecting somebody else. I think that's why some people don't wear masks, though, to be honest, is that their breath smells, and so they don't want... They, that, they don't choke want to, them. They, it'll, it'll choke them. Let me tell you something. I don't, have, I don't have a problem with having bad breath, but I have a problem breathing with that mask. Mm -hmm. If I it's put... Tough. Sometimes when I put one on, depending on what kind I'm using, if I use that one that everybody... The best one for me is the one that's blue and white, whatever mm -hmm. that is made out of. Then I got the other one that goes sort of like half moon shape. That one, just like the ones that I made, what happens is when it's too tight here because I wear glasses, my glasses get fogged up. Mm -hmm. Cause, yeah, because it's a, <laughs> But um, so we're nearing the end of our time together, but you live near the studio, so maybe we can do this again. Y'all can comment if you'd like to see this again. But first, I just wanted to share this. Burl, show them your pin. It's on the other side there. It's right here. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's, we got a lot of prints going on. But for those yeah. of you who don't know, this is the uh, intersection of black and gay, black and queer identity. Um, they're available right now for pre-sale. You can DM me. You can ping me. You can email me. 
um, you can get the pre-sale. They're ten dollars on pre-sale. Once we launch the full sale at um, in July, they're going to be fifteen dollars, fifteen zolas. So it will behoove you now to get them while they're um, a little bit less. And then we were going to sing a song. You know, I sing songs at the end, but this lady don't know no songs. So um, beat me up. I'm not beating you up. This is my friend. But do you know any songs? You have a song in your heart? No. You don't have no songs in your heart? Not right at the moment. My heart is like 20 years old. <laughs> this, Naima just, Jimmy was daughter Naima, and that's it. What did she say? She just, you know, she don't have a lot of words, but she said this. I mean, she has a lot of words, but she's still learning to read and write. She said this is Naima. Hey, I guess she's not really learning to read and write. She's seven years old. She's probably not old enough to watch this adult show. But Nima, hello. It's been a good show today, though. Yeah, it hasn't. We kind of kept it pretty clean. You don't know no songs? Did you you were singing some slave songs earlier. Oh, I love Negro spirituals. I can sing them all day and half the night. Which one's you, which one in your heart? Y'all want to hear Negro spirituals? No, they don't want to hear Negro spirituals. I don't and it's okay. Let the people say what they want to hear. Okay. All right. I'm and sorry. I can always stop you. But what Negro spiritual was in your heart? Go down, Moses, mm-hmm. way down in Egypt land. Tell oh, Pharaoh, let my people go. I think that's like a poor for West Indian lady. I can tell too, they don't have no more words. Yeah. Go down, Moses, way down in Egypt land. Tell old Pharaoh, let my people go. I can't think of the next word. <laughs> well, see, when you get to be 70, you can do that. I'm not 32. I'm having what they call a senior moment. Comes to me before the time is up, I'll finish the song. Did you want to sing with her before the time is up? I think that's too much. You got too much to sing. Why don't we have another song? What do we say we're going to do? Well, I don't know. I mean, you don't know the other song. Oh, that's true. Next time. There may not be another next time, so we're just going to make the best of this time. Thank you all for allowing me to come. Well, <laughs> she just ended my show. Um, so there you have it. This was a very special <laughs> episode of Wake Up With. You got to put your hat on. I got to put my hat on. So, I mean, this lady just came and hijacked the whole show. We had a whole bit planned, but, I mean, she said we was doing a dust thing. We're not doing a soft beat. You can put your, <laughs> you can put your glasses on, too, because I have my glasses. So Even though I, I have the blue it. coating, so it's going to give a little bit of a glare. I apologize for that, but um, we look I at us. actually see us. We look like twins. Hey, this my um, friend. This is my friend. So, um... That's what we have. We had songs prepared, but she said that we're not going to sing no songs. Um, and the network is saying to wrap it up. And she said that maybe we'll sing it next time. But then she also said that we're not going to sing it the next time because maybe it won't be a next time. Um, but all of that, I just always have one thing that I want each of you to remember and make sure we give it to the people here and we give it to the people here to choose joy because, oh. yes. So I want, you know, I mean, it's as simple as that. I hope one day to make it to 70, but really, I'm just trying to see 36. Um, I thank you all for joining us. This was a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> Brianna with her shameless plug. Frames oh by Brianna SC. Frames by me, because we pay for them. But um, but oh. frames by Brianna, Brianna SC. Go see, go see her. Um, uh, and we love you all. This was a lot of fun. Both hopefully, frames. we will... Yeah, I'm clear. Um, hopefully, we'll see you guys soon. We'll be doing more dust things. And you know, if you want to see more of this, let 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 the people know. And as she said, stop spraying hoses on us. Let my people go. Black lives matter. For real. That's it. Wave to the people. Later. You gotta keep talking. Later. 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 Alligator. Okay. Okay. After a while, <laughs> crocodile. After a while. Life. That was kind of fun. How did Sarah come up with that? We still 